Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset. Today, we're diving into a crucial topic for keeping your workflows secure, masking variables using the add mask function in GitHub Actions. I want to thank YouTuber Seattle Synth for bringing up this topic as a question on my Introduction to GitHub Actions Part 3 video. I'll throw a link up somewhere around here to that video for you. Psst, hey, come here. Thanks for checking out my channel and videos. If you're new here, don't forget to like this video, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell to stay updated on all things GitHub, DevOps, and AI. I really appreciate it. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, let's look at some examples of using the add mask function. So here we are in my my GitHub Actions presentation repository. This is the repository that has all of my or most of my GitHub Actions presentations, demos in it. It's also a public repository. So you're welcome to clone it or you're welcome to fork it. You're welcome to submit suggestions back to it, all of that. You can find it at github.com slash devops elvis slash my dash github dash actions dash presentation. So the first thing we're going to do is look at a workflow that I created that has several examples of using the add mask function in it. And then we will run the workflow and look at the results. So if we go into the dot github folder and we go into the workflows folder, there's a workflow there called masking variables. And if we look at this workflow, it has, you know, starts off as normal, has a display name. We're running it on workflow dispatch so that we can manually run it. And then the workflow is going to have several different jobs in it. The first job is going to be a simple example of masking a string. So what we're going to do in this job is take a string that we've just hard coded called super secret password one, two, three, and we're going to add a mask to it. And you do that by, by doing, using echo, you do an echo and you say colon, colon, add dash mask, colon, colon. And in this case, the string value. So now anytime we try to output that string value to the log file. So for example, by saying echo, this is my password, super secret password one, two, three, because we masked that string, when you try to write it to the log file, it's going to show up as asterisks, as stars. Now, you can still use this string in your code, and in your code it will work fine, but if you try to output it to the log file, it's going to show up as stars. So let's take this one step further, right? And let's look at how we could mask an environment variable. So in this case, we have a job demo environment variable masking. And what we're doing is creating an environment variable called my secret, and we're setting it to a value, top secret value. In the step, again, we're using colon, colon, add dash mask, colon, colon. And this time, instead of a hard-coded string, we're saying mask the environment variable my underscore secret. And now when we output that environment variable, it should write out stars for us. Again, the value of the variable is still there. It can still be used in your workflow. But if it gets written out, it gets written out as a masked value. In this case, asterisk. The next demo is going to show dynamic masking. And what I mean by dynamic masking is we're going to have two steps. The first step is going to actually grab a secret from somewhere, let's say, or create the variable for us and mask it. And then we're going to output that to the next step so that we have the ability to use that value. But if we try to write it out to the log, it would be masked. So in this case, We've got this first step called secret-step. We're generating just a random value called dynamic secret. Then we're saying colon, colon, add dash mask, colon, colon, dynamic secret to mask that value. And then we want to take 
that variable and out, set it as a step output so we can use it in future variables. So we're going to say echo generated secret. That's going to be our output variable name. We're going to set it equal to the value of whatever's in dynamic secret. And then we send that over to GitHub output. And this creates a step output variable for us. I've got a whole video on variables and doing step variables and job variables. I'll put a link somewhere around here for you to find it. So, But what this does is it outputs from this step an output variable called generated secret. That generated secret has whatever this value was that was created, but it's also masked so that now in this next step, if I try to output it by saying dot sign curly brace, curly brace, steps dot secret step dot outputs dot generated secret, instead of writing out the value of what's in generated secret, it's going to write out asterisks. But what this does is it shows you how you can go retrieve something in a step, mask it, and then share that with other steps in your job. Or you could even create job output variables and share it with other jobs in your workflow. And finally, how do you mask a multi-line variable? So in this case, I've got a variable that has some carriage returns in it. So it's a multi-line variable. It's got three different lines. So you kind of have to, to hack around a little bit. In this case, what I'm doing is outputting each line and getting each line and masking each individual line. So that will mask each line in that multi-line secret variable and so now if I try to echo out that multi-line secret variable, each line should show up as stars. So let's go actually run this and see how this might work. So we'll come back over to the actions tab. We'll go to the masking variables and we will say run workflow. This workflow won't take, take that long to run. Again, I'm using hosted runners and because I have all four jobs and there's no need statements in between the jobs, it will try to run the jobs in parallel if it can. In this case, it did. And you can see all of the jobs have finished. So if we look at the first job, if you'll remember the first job was just masking that value super secret password one, two, three. And you can see here that it did indeed, when I tried to output it, it only wrote out stars. With the environment variable, this is where we created an environment variable. And we're masking the my secret environment variable. And again, it just wrote out stars. The dynamic masking, that's where in this step, we were generating a secret and then masking it and setting it as an output. And then we tried to output that in this step. And as you can see, asterisks all the way. And finally, this was the multi-line masking where we're trying to mask that multi-line variable. So here's the multi-line variable. As you can see, it masked each line of the multi-line variable. Now, what's a real world example of needing to use this? It could be that you're pulling secrets from, say, Azure Key Vault, and you want to make sure that those values are available to other steps and jobs in the workflows, but in a secure way. Using the add mask function makes it where those values won't show up in the action log files, inherently making things more secure. Remember, folks. Always mask your sensitive data before it appears in any logs. It's a good practice to apply masking as early as possible in your workflow. That's all for today's video on masking variables in GitHub Actions. If you found this video helpful, smash that like button and share it with your fellow GitHub people. Do you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover next? Drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.